Well, we've just seen the 2021 federal budget handed down. And for all intents and purposes, it was there was a win for everyone. Uh, there was lots of cash um, splashed. And I think it was very much a post-COVID budget, although some pundits are also calling it a pre-election budget. In terms of women, there was $3.4 billion of specific initiatives that impacted women announced last night by Josh, Josh Frydenberg. They really are around women's economic security and also around women's safety and health. So it was really good to see some of those things. We would have liked to have seen it go further in terms of paid parental leave. Um, really, we think that superannuation should be mandated and should be added to the government payment for paid parental leave. We would also like to see paid parental leave moved to the globally accepted level of 26 weeks. Both of these will have quite significant impacts on women's economic security and on women's retirement savings. The other area that we are concerned about is limiting to 10,000 households uh, that initiative which where single parents can buy a house with as little as a 2% deposit with the 18% to be topped up by the government. In the government's own analysis, there's about 125,000 parents that will be eligible for that, the vast majority of which are women, because it is mostly women who head up single parent households with children. So I think that could be deemed a pilot project and it could probably go further. The other area of concern is around older women, the fastest growing homeless demographic in the country and one that particularly needs to be looked at in light of women's economic security and also vulnerability. Uh, women become very vulnerable when they are homeless and of course as they age there's a lot of health concerns with that too. So we'd like to see more there. Um, the other issue is of course is that the 3.4 billion only represents 0.014% of the to total Commonwealth expenditure over a four year period. So not a huge chunk. However, many of the other initiatives within the budget, the big spend on aged care, the big spend on the NDIS, the tax breaks for low and middle income earners will have quite a substantial impact on women. We're really looking to our colleagues at the National Foundation for Australian Women when they do their gendered budget analysis to tell us what that's going to, to be because not all policies impact genders equally. And it's absolutely critical that we really look at the budget uh, through a gender lens. Having said that, a uh, big shout out to the government for having brought back the women's budget statement. That was axed by the federal government in 2014. So an absolutely critical piece of um, documentation around the budget and great to see the government bring that back. So really good work on that front and uh, we look forward to working with the government in the future to ensure that uh, you know the needs of women are met and that we have a really equitable and equal society going forward.